Lesson 2 is some geometry review and mainly we'll be talking about angles and then polygons and some specific types of polygons such as triangles and quadrilaterals. Now in geometry there are a lot of definitions that are important to remember. I'll quickly go through a lot of these different definitions but it's up to you to memorize them. And so what I'll do, any of the words that you see in red on the board, those are definitions that you need to memorize. And you might want to just list those on a separate piece of paper and write out what each definition means. Now in the previous lesson we discussed lines a little bit and some other properties of lines are if you have two lines that never intersect, those are considered parallel lines. Two lines that do intersect, those are considered intersecting lines. And where they intersect, angles are formed. And we can identify angles by little tick marks, we call them. Now there are a number of ways, an infinite number of ways, actually, that two lines could intersect with each other. One that's real specific is when they're straight up and down compared to each other or perpendicular to each other. That example that I have there, those are perpendicular lines. And to know that they're perpendicular, like if you had two lines on a piece of paper and they said those are perpendicular, well, it's hard to know if they're exactly perpendicular or not because just you can't tell for sure maybe. So a little box is drawn on one of the corners there. And anytime you see that in a math textbook, you know that that means those are perpendicular lines. They are at right angles to each other. So lines can be parallel to each other. They can be intersecting, just regular intersecting lines. They can be perpendicular. Perpendicular, those are lines that intersect at right angles to each other. And let's just draw what a right angle is. We can always draw an angle with by two rays and then where they their endpoints connect together. And so we would identify that as a right angle by a little box on the corner. Now a right angle, that has a measure of 90 degrees. And you always measure an angle. You can start at the bottom and move over. That distance there, that is equal to 90 degrees. So that's how you always know something's a right angle, is that it's equal to 90 degrees. Now if you had two right angles that were back to back, then you would have a straight angle. And so a straight angle, and we can always tell it's a 90 degree angle or a right angle because of the box on the corner. A straight angle has a measure of 90 plus 90, so that would be 180 degrees. That's the measure of a straight angle. Now those are two types of angles that have specific measures to them. An acute angle, all that is is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. And so in that intersecting line example that I have there, the two smaller angles, both of those are acute angles. And just so you know, it happens that when you have two intersecting lines, those angles opposite to each other are equal. Sometimes they're called vertical angles. So both of those little angles are the same. And they're both acute angles. Now I've put the green tick marks on those intersecting lines. Those two are obtuse angles. Those are greater than 90 degrees. So four types of angles are right angle, which is equal to 90 degrees, straight angles, which equal 180, acute angles, which are less than 90, and obtuse angles, which are greater than 90 degrees. Well now let's go ahead and talk about polygons a little bit. Polygons, those are defined as simple, closed, flat shapes that are all their sides are line segments. So let's just think about that. Simple, closed, flat shapes whose sides are line segments. If it's simple, that means that nothing intersects. So that would be a polygon. That is simple. It's closed. This would be an example of open. So you can see the difference between open and closed. Flat, if you draw them on a piece of paper, they'll be flat. 
and then their sides are line segments. So this would not be a polygon because one of its sides is not a line segment, it's a curve. And then this, even though its sides are line segments, it would not be considered simple because the lines cross each other. So in those examples, the one I'm circling, that's the polygon. The other ones, they don't fit the definition of a polygon. Now polygons, they are named based on their number of sides. And their number of sides is also the same as their number of angles on the inside. That's where polygon comes from. Poly means more than one or many. Gon means angle, so many angles or more than one angle. That's what these shapes have. If you're using the Saxon textbook, on page 5 there's a table that talks about the names of some different polygons, like a three-sided polygon is a triangle, a four-sided is a quadrilateral, five-sided is a pentagon, and so on. You should know at least through a ten-sided polygon. Ten-sided is a decagon. That would be good to memorize all of those because you'll hear about those throughout the book. So if you don't know what an octagon is, maybe you have a problem in lesson 30 about an octagon. You have to go back to this lesson to remember what an octagon is. So try to memorize those and that will just make your math a little bit easier for you. Now it's important to know what a concave and a convex polygon are. The way you can tell the difference between them is a concave one. If you can draw a line segment somewhere and it goes outside the polygon at some place, then that's a concave polygon, just like I did there. Now on the one on the right, we can't do that anywhere. We can't draw a line segment that has its endpoints inside the polygon, but then goes outside the polygon at some point. So the one on the left is a concave, the one on the right is a convex. Now I've drawn two more polygons, two quadrilaterals, they both have four sides. One of those is a regular quadrilateral and the other one is not. Regular quadrilaterals, they have all of the sides the same length and all of the angles inside are the same measure. So this regular quadrilateral, all those angles, those are all 90 degrees. So regular polygons, they have all the sides and all the angles the same length. They may also be called equiangular polygons or equilateral polygons. If all their sides are the same length, then all their angles have to be the same length as well. So it's just by definition, then they would be a regular polygon as well because regular polygons have all the sides and all the angles the same length. Let's talk a little bit more detail about two special types of polygons that we look at a lot, triangles and quadrilaterals. There are several types of triangles that are important to know about, and some of these are real similar to angles that we've already studied. They have similar names. For example, we know what a right angle is. We represent that by the little box at the corner. That lets us know that that is a right angle and its measure is 90 degrees. We can just add another segment right there, and now we have a right triangle. And in the same way, we can make an acute triangle if it has one of its measures is less than 90 degrees that can be an acute triangle actually all of its measures all of its angles would measure less than 90 degrees an obtuse triangle just one of its angles has to measure greater than 90 degrees and so in that example that would be this angle right here that would measure greater than 90 and so that's an obtuse triangle. And then an equilateral triangle or equiangular as well. All three angles are the same measure. Let's talk about an equiangular triangle a little bit more. Now, if the, all the angles are equal to each other in an equiangular triangle, what are they equal to? Well, hopefully you remember that the sum of the angles inside a triangle, that always adds up to 180 degrees. That's a very important thing to remember about triangles. The angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So knowing that, 
there's three angles in an equiangular triangle as there are in any triangle there are three angles so we can just do 180 divided by 3 and we would find that each angle is equal to 60 degrees and so we could just put 60 degrees and then we'll put green tick marks on the other angles as well since we put one tick mark at each place that represents all three angles are the same if one of those we would have represented with maybe two tick marks or three tick marks then that would tell us that that angle was different so the tick marks those just help us identify similar angles or we could use that to identify similar sides as well for example let's talk about some triangles that have sides side relationships one of those is called an isosceles triangle in that two of the three sides are the same length iso means same the scales part isosceles the scales end that means legs or lengths similar lengths an equiangular triangle is also an equilateral triangle all of the sides are the same length so we could represent that by tick marks all three sides with one tick mark on them that tells us that they're all the same length now a scalene triangle that one no sides are the same length and so for that one we can put one tick mark here two here we could put three on the bottom one or leave it blank because either way that represents that that side is different I'll just go ahead and put three marks on there so make sure you know the difference between those three types of angles or triangles in terms of the lengths of their sides well now that you know some things about triangles in terms of their angles and sides let's go ahead and do some practice problems look at practice problem a there's a triangle there you've been given that two of the angles measure 47 degrees what is the measure of angle a that one at the top well just think about what I have written at the top of the board there angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees so to figure out a we would say a plus 47 plus 47 is equal to 180 degrees so we have those three angles a 47 and 47 we know that those have to total up to 180 degrees and so now we can just figure out what a is let's just simplify a plus 47 plus 47 that would equal 94 is equal to 100 and 80 degrees well now we think what plus 94 would give us 180 well if we subtracted 94 from 180 that would give us what a is equal to and so if you remember addition and subtraction when you have a missing value like that you can just subtract the same amount from both sides of the equal sign and 94 minus 94 that's 0 there and so then you can get a is equal to let's just go ahead and do that subtraction we'll need to borrow one from this eight and we'll have ten minus four is six and then seventeen minus nine is equal to eight eighty six degrees so that's what a is equal to and we'll put a box around that answer look at practice problem b on this one we've just been given one angle the one on the bottom right is 30 degrees and we want to find what angle B is equal to well there's got to be some other information there to tell us how to solve this problem in practice problem A that was pretty easy because we knew two of the three angles so we just have to subtract from 180 to figure out A but look at this we have an isosceles triangle so we can see that we have two sides that are the same length and we also see that the two green tick marks on the angles that tells us since those are both one tick mark that those angles are the same that's an important thing to know too that angles opposite similar sides those are equal to each other so in an isosceles triangle the angles opposite those two sides those are equal and so that means the one on the left that's 30 degrees as well so now we have 30 and 30 is 60 let's just do this problem in our head to figure out B we have to think well 60 plus what would equal 180 
Well, 60 plus 120 would equal 180. So B is equal to 120 degrees. Let's do one more problem with triangles. In this one, we've been given the obtuse angle. That's 134 degrees. Remember, an obtuse angle is greater than 90. So this is an obtuse triangle, since at least one angle is greater than 90. Acute triangles, all of the angles are less than 90. Two of the sides we've been given, those are 15 each. And so we know it's an isosceles triangle. We know that angles opposite similar sides, those are equal to each other. So that means that angle C and angle D are equal to each other. So sometimes that little symbol there is used for angle. We can say that angle C is equal to angle D. Okay. Now we know that the total angles in a triangle add up to 180. We've been given that the obtuse is 134. So if we did 180 minus 134, that would tell us how much C plus D equal. Another way to write this problem would be C plus D plus 134 is equal to 180. Let's just continue with our subtraction. We need to borrow 1. So we'd have 10 minus 4 is 6. 7 minus 3 is 4. 46 degrees is what C plus D is equal to. Now since those two are the same, we can just divide by 2. 46 divided by 2 is equal to 23. And that's what C is equal to and D. Both of those equal 23 degrees. Make sure you know the definitions of triangles based on their angles and based on their sides. That you know that the sum of the angles inside is always equal to 180 degrees. And that for isosceles triangles, those angles opposite the two similar sides, those are equal to each other as well. Briefly, let's look at some more definitions of quadrilaterals in this case. This is a specific type of polygon. And one of those is a parallelogram. And in a parallelogram, the pairs of sides, those are parallel to each other. And so let's just represent that by tick marks. Those two sides are parallel and these two sides. So a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid, that just has one pair of parallel sides. So we'll represent those by one tick mark on each of them. They just have one pair of parallel sides. A rectangle, it's like a parallelogram in that it has two pairs of parallel sides. The difference between it and just a regular parallelogram is that all of the angles inside are right angles. Another one is a rhombus. That's also like a parallelogram except all of the sides are the same length. So we represent that by one tick mark on each one. And then lastly is a square. That's like a rhombus with all the angles, right angles. So that means all the sides are the same length like a rhombus. All the angles are right angles though. Make sure you know what each of those definitions of quadrilaterals are. And sometimes you play little games with the different definitions. For example, look at practice problem D. Is a parallelogram also a square? It's important to know the definitions in order to answer a question like that. For example, a parallelogram, by definition, it just has two pairs of parallel sides. A square, it has two pairs of parallel sides that are the same length and that also all of the angles are right angles. A parallelogram does not have to have all the sides, both pairs of sides of the same length and all angles right angles. So a parallelogram is not necessarily a square. Now a square though, if you re reverse that, a square is always a parallelogram though. So the answer here is no. You could complete it, make make a com further answer to that, you could say no, but a square is a parallelogram. 
so it doesn't work both ways. A trapezoid is always a quadrilateral, but a quadrilateral is not necessarily a trapezoid. Just make sure you understand the differences in the how each of those types of quadrilaterals was defined. Okay, well that's all for lesson two.